Uh, Senator, thank you very much for being here tonight. You know, uh, I mean, Brianna Taylor was not uh, the, the subject of an investigation when these detectives came to the apartment. Uh, she was with her boyfriend. They had been looking into possible drug uh, connections with her former boyfriend, who lives several miles away. Um, what? How does this decision sit with you tonight, Senator? Well, you know, I've been a long time advocate of getting rid of no knock raids. I know in your lead up to this, they say it wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. a no knock raid. However, it's a high risk raid going in after midnight looking for possession of drugs. And I think it's not worth uh, losing the life of a police officer or someone inside the house. So I'm just not in, in favor of doing this in, in search of uh, drug possession. I don't think it's worse the, the loss of life. With regard to Louisville, though, I'm, I'm kind of saddened to see the fires. I hope we can begin to heal on this. I've been calling for weeks for the National Guard to be out. I think the governor has not taken that seriously. I hope there will be enough National Guard to prevent the destruction downtown in Louisville. It's a great city, and I hope, I hope it doesn't catch on fire uh, more than what we see so far. Yeah. I mean, the way that the Attorney General Daniel Cameron laid out the findings and it's, it's worth reiterating that this is the decision of the grand jury this is not the decision of the attorney general um, they investigated they brought forth the information before this grand jury the fbi also did an investigation and those findings were made available to this grand jury but what do you say to people in louisville tonight who are upset with what even led up to them being at that apartment and feel that it was a situation that got out of control and that there's nothing being done to fix that. I know you've, you've tried to address that, but what would you say to, to them tonight, to these people um, who are obviously very upset? I think this was a bad situation where we put police into a bad situation and also the people yeah. on the other side of the door, Beona Taylor and her boyfriend in a bad situation. The best way to do this is to reform the law. So Louisville has banned no-knock raids. Now they're looking at how this warrant was obtained. I've introduced federal legislation also to get rid of no-knock raids to try to prevent some tragedy like this from happening again. Yeah. So I think we are responding in a way. The specific details, you know, I can't judge guilt or innocence and ultimately this isn't the end. This is the beginning. A jury will have to decide that. Yeah. But those details are best left to a jury without politicians and everybody else weighing in on guilt or innocence. But I don't want this to happen again. Mm -hmm. And I am working hard to try to make sure yeah. either federal law or local law prevents this from happening. Well, we remember when you were accosted by protesters in the street who wanted you to chant her name. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they were obviously not aware of the work that you had been doing on behalf of these no-knock raids on the Bri Brianna Taylor Act, um, which you uh, which you initiated. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about COVID and the hearings on the Hill today, which you were part of. This is an exchange that you had with Dr. Fauci. How yeah. could we possibly be jumping up and down and saying, oh, Governor Cuomo did a great no. job. He had the worst death rate in the world. No, you misconstrued that, Senator, and you've done that repetitively in the past because they are looking at the guidelines that we have put together or they've developed enough community immunity uh, i challenge I'm that uh I'm senator afraid. because this happens with senator rand all the time that in new york it's about 22 percent if you believe 22 percent is herd immunity i believe you're alone in that so uh, you went after him on the subject of Governor Cuomo and the record in New York, which I think a lot of New Yorkers can understand. Um, you also went after him on this question as, as a doctor on how, you know, how, what percentage does connote uh, herd immunity? And you guys went back and forth on it. Tell me, tell well, me about that. Well, the facts are the facts from the John Hopkins website, which is esteemed and people say as these are the facts. The highest death rate in the world is in New York, 1,700 deaths per million. The U.S. average about 500. The average in, or actually about 600 now. The average in Sweden about 570. But on the question of herd immunity, they're dismissive of, dismissive of this, but I'm sending over to Dr. Fauci so he can read a little bit on this. In Science Magazine in August, three mathematicians came out with a, the idea that because an infection, transmiss, transmission of infections and immunity seem to be concentrated in younger people. They seem to catch this faster and be more active and out in public more. That it actually skews the formulas on herd immunity and would allow herd immunity at a much lower rate. 
The other thing from the John Hopkins website you see is New York's having no new incidents and no new deaths. Now he wants to say, oh, it's because everybody's washing their hands. Right. I don't believe that. I think they were washing their hands in April and we still had all these deaths. So there's something going on, and I can't say with certainty, but over the next couple of months, if there is no significant surge again without a vaccine in New York, it will look like herd immunity. That's what it looks like in Sweden right now. And it looks like this around the world. When people have had a significant surge, they're not getting a second surge. And there are mathematicians who have looked at the formula on herd immunity in the August edition of Science Journal, and they actually say, mm -hmm. you know what, herd immunity may come much lower than some of these experts think. I, I think it's fascinating. Uh, and I think only time will really tell. I, I did read that study as well. Um, before I let you go, can, can you give us your thoughts on the Hunter Biden um, investigation that was there was a preliminary report on the findings and it didn't seem to find anything that uh, connected him to anything illegal. Well, I don't know. I think riding on Air Force Two and doing business is illegal. I think that is against the law and probably a felony. I think it's illegal to take money from a, a Russian politician's wife, three and a half million dollars. Was it reported accurately? I think the only way to determine the actual legality of this is to have it referred to the Department of Justice. So I'm going to send the report over. I don't know if the whole committee will vote for it, but I'm sending the report uh, tomorrow to the Department of Justice, and we're asking for a criminal referral. We want to see that if there's a criminal investigation, that's justified. Here's this evidence. Look at it. And then you're the lawyers for the government. You decide if you have enough to prosecute. But I think we should refer this for a criminal criminal investigation. All right. We got to leave it there. Senator, thank you for coming on tonight. Good to see you, thank sir. You.